In this lecture, we will talk about region of convergence and stability of causal and anti-causal LTI systems. For a causal LTI system, the region of convergence is right side to the rightmost pole. Now this property is same as the property we saw for the right-sided signals. If you remember the lecture in which I explained all the properties of ROC, I gave you one property. According to that property, if we have a right-sided signal, then the Laplace transform of this right-sided signal will have the region of convergence which will exist on the right side to the rightmost pole. And the same thing is there for causal LTI system. After this, we will move on to the anti-causal LTI system. For an anti-causal LTI system, the region of convergence is left side to the leftmost pole. And this time, the property is matching to the property of left-sided signals. Because for left-sided signals, the Laplace transform will have region of convergence existing on the left side to the leftmost pole. So this is all about the ROC of causal and anti-causal LTI systems. Now we will talk about stability of causal LTI system. For the stability of a causal LTI system, all the poles should lie in the left half side of the S-plane. And on the other hand, for anti-causal LTI system, for the stability, all the poles should lie in the right half side of the S-plane. So for a causal LTI system to be stable, all the poles must lie in the left half side of the S-plane. And for an anti-causal LTI system to be stable, all the poles must lie in the right half side of the S-plane. Or you can remember one simple property for a system to be stable, j omega axis or you can say the imaginary axis of the s-plane must be included in the roc we have already discussed about this property and we have also solved many examples using this property whenever region of convergence is given you can find out whether the lti system is stable or not just by finding out whether j omega axis is included in the region of convergence or not. So there is no need to remember these two properties separately. You can only remember this one property. Now we will solve two examples to understand all the four properties we have seen. In the first example, you can see the region of convergence. The green shaded portion is the region of convergence and the region of convergence is existing on the left side of the pole 3 and looking at the region of convergence we can say that 3 is the left most pole we can say that 3 is the left most pole because Laplace transform do not exist at the poles and region of convergence is nothing but the region in which Laplace transform exists. And as all the region we are having here is on the left side of this pole, there will be no pole in this region of convergence. And this makes 3 as the leftmost pole. So we can see that the region of convergence is existing to the left side of the leftmost pole. Therefore, from this property, we can say that this is the region of convergence of the Laplace transform of an anti-causal LTI system. Now we will talk about the stability. You can see that J omega axis is included in the region of convergence. This implies the anti-causal system we are having here is stable in nature. Moreover, you can check this property as well. This property says all the poles should lie in the right half side of the S-plane. 3 is the leftmost pole. 
So all the other poles will lie on the right side of 3 and you can see that 3 is existing on the right half side of the S plane. So all the other poles will also exist on the right half side of the S plane. This makes all the poles of the system existing on the right half side of the S plane which means the anti-causal system we are having here is stable. Now we will move to example number 2. In example number 2 again we are having the region of convergence and the region of convergence is represented by the green shaded portion and I will give you this example as homework problem. You need to tell me what is the type of the system whether it is causal or it is anti-causal and you also need to tell me about whether the system is stable or unstable. So try to solve the example number two. This is homework for you and once you have your answer post it in comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.